In the world of football, the position of tight end has always been seen as kind of a minor piece in the chess match that is an NFL game. They're not really receivers, they aren't really linemen, but they're more of a hybrid of both essentially. And sometimes because of this role, they have less of a spotlight than the other key cogs in the machine. Now for me, tight ends have always been one of my favorite positions in football, and I think part of the reason is that role specifically, being that they're the biggest skill position player. A guy that's able to make an impact on pure size alone in both the blocking and receiving elements of the game. But each generation, there are a few players that are athletically gifted enough to rise above their positional role of someone who either blocks or falls forward on a short yardage catch. These guys are the ones who have carved their names in history as tight end legends. And once they get that spotlight, we find out there's a lot more personality to these players than just being human walls. There's something for everybody, really. For instance, for middle schoolers, there's Gronk. I got 69 touchdowns. You know what I mean. <laughs> And if that's not your style, I mean, who doesn't love themselves some Shannon Sharp? Y'all see what this is? That's that Floyd Money Mayweather, Avion, limited edition tequila. At any rate, my point is tight ends are just as entertaining as any of the other skill positions, even if they don't get all the OBJ max deals and glamour sometimes. And that brings me to today's video, a player whose unique combination of size, speed, and personality give him all the tools to be the NFL's next great tight end. Assuming you read the title of the video, you already know that guy's George Kittle, tight end for the San Francisco 49ers. Now what intrigues me most about Kittle is the fact that he was really pretty overlooked as an offensive weapon for most of his playing career, and up until playing in Kyle Shanahan's offense, he was never a star at any level, which led me to wonder why a guy this skilled had been so unnoticed for so long. So how did he get into the NFL, and into a position where he would very quickly shatter the record for most receiving yards by a tight end in a single season, surpassing every other man to ever play that position? Well, here's the story. From the time that he was a little kid, George Kittle was no stranger to the underdog mentality. He was raised in the heart of flyover country in Iowa, and attended three different high schools when he was growing up, planting him at Norman High in Oklahoma for his senior season. All of this movement, along with his primary position being wide receiver in a crowded class of them, led him to be barely recruited at all, listed at 199th in his position in the US by 24-7 Sports. In fact, Kittle had only received one D1 offer from Air Force when he received a call at the last minute on National Signing Day. It's a beautiful, well-earned victory for the Hawkeyes. It was his dream program, the University of Iowa, where his father Bruce had played offensive line many years before. In fact, it was a school where George had a lot of family history, including his cousin, Henry Krager Kobel, who would be attending at the same time as him. At any rate, Kittle was thrilled to get the opportunity to play for their football team, so when they asked him to make the switch from wide receiver to tight end, it was a very easy decision, and it would turn out later to be the right one. So he started training hard, putting on weight, and beginning to develop the blocking skills he'd need to be a tight end in a very run-heavy Big Ten offense. Despite the challenges of switching positions, he didn't complain and quickly gained the respect of his teammates at Iowa. In his off time, he was a dude's dude. This guy's being, this guy's dude. being dude. Eating Panda Express and watching Game of Thrones and WWE. You can ask his roommates, he had six of them at one point, including his college quarterback CJ Beathard, a guy that he would later be catching passes from on an NFL team. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. You see, Iowa still didn't consider George Kittle to be a receiver. He was a blocker first, which is exactly what his coaches needed from him, but he didn't have a huge role in the passing game. Even still, he maximized his opportunities to be a difference maker on offense. During his junior season, Kittle stepped into an even bigger role to become a central piece of the offensive game, and in six starts during the historic 12-2 season the Hawkeyes had, Kittle led the team with six TD receptions, though they only came on 20 catches throughout the entire year. George Kittle's stock was starting to rise. And though he was still considered to be more of a pure blocking tight end by NFL scouts, he would finish his career at Iowa with something only 18 other collegiate tight ends would receive, an invite to the NFL Combine. Now this was a unique opportunity for Kittle, as it was the first time in his career where he'd be able to showcase his athleticism as an individual, and he had a secret weapon. So I had a Rihanna playlist made before the Combine, so when I was warm enough, that's all I was listening to was Rihanna, as loud as it could possibly be. Yeah, so maybe blasting Rihanna seems like a bit of an unconventional choice for an NFL athlete, but with the way that Kittle performed at the Combine, I might start adding some Rihanna to my playlist. Because in comparison to where expectations were, he showed out, placing top six in vertical jump, broad jump, and even shocking people with a faster 40 time than Miami's highly touted David Njoku. 
but even with his stock rising, no one had ever considered what an impact the team that selected George Kittle would have on his abilities to thrive as an offensive weapon. Pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers uh, pick good friend of C.J. Bethford, George Kittle, tight end from Iowa. George Kittle was selected in the fifth round by the San Francisco 49ers as the ninth tight end off the board. Needless to say, he was still being overlooked. Two rounds before, his college teammate C.J. Beathard was selected by the same team, making the process of transitioning into the big leagues a little bit easier on the both of them. Kittle wasted no time in putting work in training camp that offseason to quickly carve himself a role into Kyle Shanahan's creative and young offense, earning the starting role going into his rookie season. But even though George Kittle was prepared to take the next step in contributing to a winning franchise, the 49ers seemed to have somewhat of a different plan. San Francisco was the laughing stock of the NFL, starting completely winless through their first nine games. And even though a lot of these games were very close, the Niners' playoff hopes in Shanahan's first year were very quickly demolished. But then, at the trade deadline, a bizarre move would give a little bit of hope to the organization. Jimmy Garoppolo goes from the Patriots backup to now the 49ers in exchange for a 2018 Second round pick. And just like that, miraculously, the dark wizard himself, Bill Belichick, had given the 49ers their quarterback of the future in the form of Jimmy Garoppolo. And with a new star quarterback leading the way, the offense finally started rolling again, winning six out of their last seven games. And there was finally some hope in the Bay Area. George Kittle was finally on a serviceable offense, and he would take a step as a receiver to finish the season with 43 catches for 515 yards and two touchdowns. But in San Francisco, it was now about the future. The spark that Jimmy G provided made the Niners into a legitimate playoff contender. And just like that, the organization started making moves to make a run the very next year. Needless to say, it was a busy offseason. First order business, re-sign the man himself to a massive contract. Draft a tackle to protect your franchise QB. Draft a new weapon at wideout. And cap it off by signing an emerging star running back to a mega team. All the pieces were falling into place to create a high-powered Shanahan offense with Kittle as a primary receiving target, one that would hope to mimic the success of the Falcons a few years prior, who flew all the way to the Super Bowl. But just as the Falcons found out the hard way, the football gods giveth, and they taketh away. Less than a mere three weeks into the season, the 49ers had lost both their starting running back and their star QB. It seemed like the fate of the Niners season was lost again, this time without a Jimmy G miracle to provide hope for the future. But this time around, Kittle wasn't going to let his performance be dictated by his circumstances. With the help of some of Shanahan's schemes to get him out into the open field, Kittle utilized his generational shiftiness for a player of his size, and exploded onto the scene under the play of two different backup quarterbacks. Not to mention, he was the only constant threat in the revolving door that was the Niners receiving core, so you better believe the defenses were keying in on him. Regardless, Kittle took off on record pace with massive performances of 125 yards, 98 yards, 108 yards, all with a touchdown in each. He even led the league in yards after catch among all receivers. And we haven't even mentioned the official George Kittle coming out party. December 8th versus the Broncos, 205 yards against an NFL defense. I'll let the tape speak for itself. He's looking to throw. There's Kittle wide open. Kittle in Denver territory. And the craziest thing was, all of these yards, all 205 were in the first half. He didn't have a singular catch after halftime. And because of that, he fell just five yards short of Shannon Sharp's all-time receiving record for a single game. But as the year continued on, the people of America started to take notice of San Francisco's newest star, and got to see a little bit more of what he's like when he isn't torching linebackers. Howdy. For instance, how did he celebrate his first Pro Bowl nod? I mean, with Chinese food and Netflix, as any other American would. Or there was that one time when he had to dip out of a post-game presser a little bit early because he was about to be late for a WWE event that he had tickets to. And remember, all of this stuff is going on while he is embarrassing NFL defenses at an unprecedented rate. 
and if his body of work so far hasn't proven to you that he's up next, he had one more show-stopping performance in the final game of the regular season. On the cusp of breaking the all-time record for receiving yards in a season by the tight end position, Kittle did what he does best. He's in the slot right there, and they're looking for him. And he's going to break the all-time record. Kittle inside the 30, the 20. What an unbelievable year for George Kittle. Has just shattered the single-season record for receiving yards by a tight end. How about that? And with that play, George Kittle would cap off a massive second season by placing a record into the NFL history books. So that's the story so far. And here we are yet again with a player bringing hope for the 49er faithful to believe in, just like a certain guy did the year before. Now, if there's one thing that we've learned, it's that the football gods make sure that nothing is certain. But if I had to make a bet on the direction George Kittle's career is headed, I'd say there's a lot more records and Panda Express to be destroyed in the next few years by the league's newest superstar. Oh.